Steam Monster, Steam Monster, Steam Monster, Steam Monster, Steam Monsters. News Talk with Little Scribe. Hi, Monster fans. This is Little Scribe coming at you with some exciting new developments with the Steam Monsters game. You've probably already figured out by now because the announcement was made three or four days ago that the mechanics of the game have been released. We finally know what the game is about and how it will be played. Keep in mind, it is in alpha, which means as I read to you the mechanics of the game, understand that any one of these parts can and may be changed within the next few weeks. But this should give you an idea of how it's going to take place. So let's head over to the actual mechanic descriptions of the game. Okay, so it says, here it is, the post that everyone has been waiting for. I'd call that an understatement, Agro, but, <laughs> but it's okay. I mean, we're not har harping on you. We're just saying we're so excited. So the first thing that we need to know, if especially if you're new, is that the cards are broken up into splinters. Splinter is another word for nationality. So the way that Carrie Allen explains it is, and Carrie Allen is head of the fiction and the lore department, the way that she explains it is that a splinter is like a continent. Before the splinter happened, everything was on one continent. It's like a Pangea of sorts. And then a major event happened and all of the nations were divided. Each nation is represented by an element. We have fire, water, earth, death, life, and then of course the dragons who are kind of their own thing. So that's the first thing. The second thing you need to be aware of is he wanted to refer to it as a team because this is a drafting game. So essentially it's like fantasy football. You draft your team, you unleash them on the game, and then whoever wins wins depending on the strengths of the players. This is exactly the same. You're going to draft your team and you're going to put them on the board and watch them play. It's thus far and as far as I know an automated system. So you pick your team and then you pick which attributes you'd like each member of the team to have and then they unleash on the opposing team. And the last one standing is the one that wins that battle or if there are a series of battles then there will be a tournament and the last one standing at the end of the tournament wins the tournament. The position of each monster on the team will determine what it can do and which enemy monsters will target it and which enemy monsters it will target. I understand that the tournaments will be weekly as far as scheduled formally, but I mean, who are we kidding? <laughs> People are gonna be having tournaments and battles like all over Yonkers, and I think that there are lots already going on. So, but as far as the actual Steam Monsters sponsored battles and tournaments, they, they will, as far as I know, be taking place weekly. I don't know what day. Either way, Coruscate, 007 and I will be covering the sports and we're not sure whether it's going to be a live commentation or an after the fact summary or a little bit of both but just stay tuned because we're super excited about that. Here's how it works. A lot of us really are not high rollers like Matt Clark and 007 and Crypt Keeper. They are in their own category. They will be playing gold games because they and, and like Cajun just purchased an entire gold deck. So he's all set up except with, I think he's lacking the Selenia Sky legendary, gold legendary. I offered to give him one, but then I remembered that I don't have any. So <laughs> there's gonna be different tiers and different levels. So don't feel scared to play just cause you don't have all the cards or as many cards as Hajin. Going to basically be a playing according to your weight. It's kind of like, are we a lightweight or a heavyweight? When you go to a wrestling match, they're not gonna put a 100 pound guy with a 200 pound guy, that's not fair. So they're gonna put us with categories that fit us. All of the battles cost mana. And depending on the level of the battle will, de will determine how much mana the battle costs you. But it says basically all of the cards in the game have a cost in mana denoted by the number of in the blue circle that's right here like this little number three at the top left corner of the card every battle will have a mana cap which provides an upper limit on the total mana cost of each team that is participating in that battle well that's kind of complicated what it basically means is 
that you combine all of the cards on your team and add up their numbers. And that's how much mana it's gonna cost you. So if your team consists of a three mana summoner, two five mana monsters, and a seven mana monster, then the total mana cost would be 20. And so when you pay your 20 mana, then that team is eligible to enter any battle with a mana cap of 20 or higher. See how that works? So you're gonna basically be able to play the same weight. This isn't just for the rich people, this is for all of us. So a game should be fun. It shouldn't be like, oh, I can't play because I don't have any mana. I imagine it's gonna be like actual money or maybe it will be like, you'll be given a certain amount of mana at the beginning. That's what, that would be actually really cool is if, is if they gave you like 50 mana to start with. So you could buy mana. That's what I would do is I would give away every player 50 mana to start with so they can play at least two good solid matches. And, and then if you wanna buy more mana, then you can, or you can trade for it. So it's almost like an altcoin of Steam Monsters. It's brilliant. So we have, basically the teams are divided into like splinters. So for example, you have a summoner in every splinter. So let's click on the summoners. Summoners are not necessarily monsters. They are people or magicians who summon the monsters to battle. Summoners can only pick monsters that are from their splinter. So I can't have Alric Stormbringer, who's from the blue team, from the blue splinter, summoning monsters that are from the white splinter. And all of the monsters that Liana Natura summons will be from the green splinter. Do you follow? And the value in leveling up summoners is that they can summon monsters at their same level. So we do want our summoners to level up because then they can summon, summon stronger monsters. That's, that's actually basically like their whole point. So like, a level four rare summoner, which is halfway up the max level, will be able to summon common monsters up to level five, rare monsters up to level four, epic monsters up to level three, and legendary monsters up to level two. So for example, let's take a look at my greens. We're gonna look at all of my greens. My summoner, is at a level three. So what that means is she can summon commons up to level four, rares up to level three, epics up to level two, and legendaries up to level one. So it's basically like a notch down for each one. Or Let's say your Liana Natura is a level three and all of your monsters are level 10. Does that mean you can't play? No, it doesn't mean you can't play. It just means that they can only play at a level three. So what I've done is I've leveled up all of my summoners and I had levels three and four. So that's as high as I can play until I acquire more summoners and level up my cards. If you wanna play a higher level game, you need to get more summoners. But if you have any questions, then um, write them in the comments below. Or if you know more, write them in the comments below because I feel like this is sort of an ongoing conversation. And again, as I said, it is an alpha. There is one exception though. Selenia Sky is the summoner for the Gloradrax splinter, the purple splinter, which is consists of dragons and dragon born. So what they've said is Selenia Sky, the only currently known Gloradrax dragon summoner, can summon Gloradrax monsters as well as monsters from any other splinter currently known. Currently known. Sidebar, currently known implies there will be other splinters. That's kind of a mysterious little phrasing there, Agro. We'd be curious to see what you mean by that. Anyways, back to the point. Monsters from different splinters will never fight on the same team. So if Selenia Sky can summon monsters from other splinters, whatever splinter she chooses to summon from is the splinter that she needs to stick with for that team. So you cannot have Selenia Sky summoning a monster from the white splinter 
and a monster from the Red Splinter and have them play on the same team. That's never gonna happen. However, she could make a combination of monsters from her own Splinter and monsters from another Splinter. So she's the only one who can do that. So essentially, if you have a Selenia Sky, you can combine any Splinter with uh, a Gloradrax monster. So Gloradrax monsters can be combined with any other monster as long as you have a Selenia Sky. Hope that makes sense, but She's basically the only exception. Everyone else can only summon within their splinter. Okay, so that's that's that. The next thing is battles. Battles will be one-on-one -on -one fights between two opposing teams. And they're either PvP, which is person versus person, or PvE, which is person versus en environment, which is another way of saying playing the computer. Like when you play chess against the computer, same thing. You can either play single one-off battles or you can play part of a larger group of battles like a tournament. So moving on. This is where it gets a little bit interesting. Each card has stats. And by stats, I mean attack positions, magic attack, speed, health, and armor. I think that next week they'll be releasing the stats for each monster and that's gonna be so exciting. I can't wait to see who does what in the steam monsters world so if you're attacked by the opponent then your health would go down and your specific card starts each battle with a certain amount of health and then armor obviously would protect you against that attack so what it says this is what's interesting the armor stat denotes how much an, how much attack damage the monster can absorb before its health starts to get reduced basically the armor absorbs that attack so it could absorb an entire attack, even if the damage from that attack exceeds the armor value. A monster with level three attack hits a monster with four armor and five health. The result of the attack would be the armor goes down to one and the health would remain, remain at five. And here's another example. A monster with attack level three hits a monster with armor one and health five. So what do you think is gonna happen? The attack level is three. You would think that it would go one, two, three, and then you'd be left with three health, but nope. The result of the attack would decrease the end of defender's armor to zero and the health would remain at five because armor absorbs the entire attack. Super cool. Okay, so then here's the other thing that you need to know is magic attacks go, they penetrate through armor. So armor cannot protect against a magic attack. So if you have a monster with a magic attack of two and you have a defending monster with an armor of five, it don't matter how much your armor is, it's gonna go straight through to the health. The result of the magic attack would decrease the defendant's health, the defender's health to a three because it was a five, magic attack was two, so it goes down to a three. The armor would remain at four, so you don't lose your armor, but just know that it's not gonna protect against magic. Um, a melee attack can only be performed from the first position to the first position. So, and again, it reduces opponent's armor before it reduces their health. Basically how it's set up is kind of like a lineup you're gonna set up your team and you're gonna have a first, a second, a third, a fourth, however many monsters you want on your team. You're gonna set your team up in order, in an order. What Agro is recommending as a general rule is to put your stronger monsters in front and your more supportive monsters in back because generally speaking, your stronger monsters are gonna be able to take more hits. And then when the supportive monsters come in, they're not gonna be dead in the first five seconds. That being said, that brings us to the ranged attack. A ranged attack, they can be performed from any position, except for the first, the first is a melee. So the ranged attack comes, can come from behind and hit someone in behind. That's the only thing, and so can magic. Magic can, can be attacked from any position, including the first. Magic attacks can be, formed, can be performed from any position. The other thing is that magic attacks cannot miss like a melee or a ranged attack can. 
and they can ignore the armor. So basically the magic attack is the best attack of all time because you can shoot it from anywhere, it doesn't miss, and it is impervious to, or rather it penetrates armor. So it's like the deadliest attack that you can give. Now, when I talk about miss, that is actually one of the abilities that you can give some of the monsters. And not all of the monsters have all of the abilities and I don't know which ones have which, but when you set up your team, there's little buttons that you'll be able to push to engage a particular ability or power that you want that monster to have. When you get down to the abilities, one of the abilities is to dodge. So monsters with dodge have a higher chance of evading melee and ranged attacks. Meaning that if I have dodged, then you attack me, then you'll miss. Okay, so let's go back up. There was, I think, one more stat, which is speed. Speed determines three things. Number one, it determines which, on, which monster comes up next in the battle in the line. It determines how quickly it is to hit its opponent and how, how able it is to evade an attack. So speed's kind of cool. I feel like that's a multi-faceted ability that we want to have a lot of. And then you get down to abilities. You have flying abilities, trample abilities. Trample's cool because when a monster with trample kills its target, it performs an additional melee attack on the next monster in order on the opposing team. So let's say I have trample and I kill you, you die, the next monster that comes up also gets an additional attack from me. So it's kind of like two attacks for the price of one. Super cool. Healing, group heal, and void. Void is basically the only thing you have to protect yourself against a magic attack. So it's nice to know that there is something of an antidote there. A shield, poison. What happens is that it causes the poison monster to take damage at the start of each round in that battle. So if you hit them with poison, then for the remainder of game, they will have a damage, which directly reduces their health. So that makes them weaker for the entire battle. Stun, slow, blast, arranged or magic attack, can do splash damage to adjacent enemy monsters. I don't really know what that means. <laughs> Inspire, protect, fear. Man, this is gonna be so cool. Like, there is so much strategy involved. You could have the same exact monster line up on each team, the opposing teams, and have a completely different outcome depending on which abilities and stats they have. That's what's so cool about this game, is it's not really super predictable. The other thing is that kind of begs the question of, are you gonna know their lineup? I feel like you are. I feel like what happens is you're gonna know the opponent's lineup, like right when you start, and then you'll have this certain amount of time to select which abilities you want each monster to have. So like you can be strategic about it. You can be like, oh, looks like they have a flesh golem on the front. Okay, we wanna give them fear, and so you know what you can do with that. Enrage, sneak. Okay, so guys, I'm not gonna go through every single one. There's a million, but just go take a look at those. They're really cool. I like the graphics. I like the properties of each ability. There are two ways to level up. Number one is just by having or buying duplicate cards and then leveling them up within the monster collection, the card collection. The second way is to win battles and tournaments and that gets you enough XP that it will eventually level up. So when a level, when a monster levels up, its stats may also increase and it may also gain new abilities, which I think is so cool. So you cannot level up in the middle of a battle. All experience points are gained from, a, that are gained from the battle will be awarded once the battle or tournament is over. When the first monster on a team is killed, then the next monster in order on that team will move up to take its place. So it's really just like an elimination game. But the monsters still take turns. The, the monster with the highest speed stat value will attack first. And we're gonna take a look at that in just a second. We'll watch an actual game. All right, so let's go to the game between Agrode and Yaba Pima. And just so you know, the graphics are not done. Like they're kind of basic graphics. A lot of the pictures and stuff are just placeholders. There are no sound effects yet. So those will come in later. I think Asaria and Harrison Mir are gonna be primarily responsible for the music and the sound effects of the game. And I think Carrie Allen too. She's, she's kind of the sound effect queen. So, but, but we're just gonna watch the match. Now, it goes kind of fast. 
so I'll probably slow it down and then I will comment on it. All right, here goes. Okay, so we have Agrode versus Yabba P. Matt. Agrode is lining up his team. He's got a Saber Shark, a Crustacean King, a Frost Giant, and a, a Spineback Turtle. And then on Yabba's team, he's got the Feral Spirit, the Divine Healer, the Peace Bringer, and the Defender of Truth. So he's look, it looks like he has summoned the white team and Agrode has summoned the blue splinter. And you'll see each card has all of these different numbers and indicators. So the heart is obviously the health. The shield represents armor. And then this little blue circle represents the speed of each monster. Next, they're going to select the attributes or abilities that they would like their monsters to have. So Agro is selecting thorns, a slow button, a protected button, and Yaba is selecting a shield, a group heal, a sneak button, and now they're ready to start. So first is the feral spirit, next is the saber shark, and you can see who goes next because their card will kind of shimmer and light up. That's how you know who's going next. And then it shows you whether that attack had an effect on that card. And you'll notice that sometimes the health goes down and sometimes it doesn't. The ones that don't are because they have armor. So that one died. Frost Giant, what are you gonna do? Station King's going to attack the Peace Bringer. That looks like magic as well. Magic again. Ooh, Feral Spirit's gonna attack with a uh, long range. Ooh, and the shark dies. And we have just kind of a back and forth. And I don't know, you know, I mean it's too fast for me to figure out the order of things, but you can see each of their attributes and abilities are kind of cropping up. A miss. Remember we talked about that earlier? Now he just lost five points on his health. I'm not sure what the fireball is. They're really cool effects and I'm sure they'll become more specific as we get used to it. Okay, Feral Spirit dies. Another magic, another magic. Long range attack. Fireball attack. I think the fireball is the short range attack. And the axe is the long range attack. And that's, then the green is magic. I mean, that's my guess, I don't know. Oh, okay, looks like aggroed one. I guess that just about wraps it up. I'm sure that you guys are gonna have a lot of questions about how this is gonna play out and what the mechanics are, and I don't know all the answers, but it will help me if you write down your questions because I can look into it and figure it out or tell you where to go to figure it out. I'm excited to have such an awesome opportunity to participate in this amazing experience. I guess we'll catch you next time. Happy monstering!